All right, so number spiral problem from the CSS problem set. Uh, let's read the instruction here. So we have a time limit of one second. And the instruction goes, a number spiral is an infinite grid whose upper left square has number one. Here are the first five layers of the spiral. We are given the image of the, of the grid here. And your task is to find out the number in row Y and column X, okay? And we have that the input uh, contains, the, the first line is the number, uh, the integer T, which is uh, the number of test cases here. And after this, we're given uh, T lines, each containing integers Y and X. And the, the limits here uh, show that uh, T goes up to 100,000 and Y and X will go up to 1 billion. So we want a solution that given uh, Y and X, it will give it will retrieve the value of the cell um, in uh, a constant time, okay? Because if we were to have a, an OY solution or OX solution here, one billion is uh, a great, a very big number. Uh, and if you consider how many test cases you have as well, then the number becomes even bigger, okay? So finding a constant solution instead will give us an uh, a complexity of OT essentially. So how, ma how many test cases we have. Uh, so which is at most 100,000 and that's a small number which will pass in the uh, one second time limit that we have. Um, let's look at the input here. So what we can see from the input here is, okay, for uh, row number two and column number three. So this cell here, essentially, the value is, the value is eight, okay. And we can also see that the indexing uh, is one-based indexing because the top left corner here, uh, which is uh, number one, essentially, um, has uh, y equals to one and x equals to one. So first row, first column, uh, begin from begin the indexing from number one, essentially, okay? Um, so let's look at the solution now, okay? So for this solution, um, what I did was to break down the problem into two sub main sub problems. Okay, um, so let's visualize this. By the way, let's look at the pattern here. Okay, uh, it goes like this. Okay, so based on this pattern, we have to figure out a way to get the constant time. Okay, um, as I said, I broke down the problem into two uh, sub problems. Uh, here, instead of reading uh, y and x as it is defined in the equation in the in, in, in introduction of the problem here, I'm using i and j. So i uh, dictates the row and j equal, uh, dictates the the column here. Okay. So let's look at the first case where uh, i is greater than j, and let's visualize these two cases essentially. So these are the two main cases i being greater than uh, or equal to j and j being greater than i. So the cells that you see in light green here uh, represent uh, the cells um, for, each, uh, for each certain occasion, okay? So um, uh, for, for the, the bottom left uh, part of the grid and the diagonal represent this case here and the top left part, uh, excluding the diagonal of the, of the grid, uh, represent this case here. Okay, then after I break the problem into two, into these two cases, you can see that I break it down uh, into two further sub cases here, okay? So let's look at the first scenario, okay, where i is greater or equal to j. So here, when i is even, I return uh, this answer here, okay? So this is the answer I'm returning. Uh, let's analyze this answer to see why uh, this is the answer. So first, first of all, we have the i minus one times i minus one, which uh, I tended uh, for it to represent the rectangle, which is directly above of our um, um, our row, essentially. Okay. So for four and three here, this is the rectangle that I'm pointing to, and for 16, 15, 14, and thirteen, this is the rectangle that I am pointing to. Uh, so let, let's say the square essentially. I care about the square which is directly above uh, of my row essentially. And because i is even, i minus one will always be odd essentially, okay? And for odd sided uh, squares here, we can observe that the greatest number will always be on the top right 
uh, side, okay, of, of, of our uh, square essentially. So all of the numbers that um, are inside of this square will uh, always uh, appear before our numbers, which are located in our uh, row here, okay? Uh, and that is because if you look at the pattern, okay, we're gonna end up on this top right uh, cell of the square, then we go to the right, and then we go to the bottom to reach uh, our uh, row, which includes these numbers here, okay? Uh, the same will be for uh, I being equal to six, for example, we go to the right from the top right corner and then to the bottom until we reach the row we care about essentially, okay? Um, so our goal here is to count how many numbers come before of our number uh, and then output the answer essentially, okay? So definitely this square, the, the numbers that are inside this square will always come before our numbers. We can see this from the pattern here, okay? So the first thing we count, let's let's do the case for 16 up, up on, uh, until 13 here, is this square here. So this is i minus one times i minus one. And then what I'm adding is i minus j, and then I add i. So let's look first uh, at why am I adding i here. So i will essentially give you this column here, okay? Um, to reach our row, okay, so row number four, for example, we're gonna have to go downwards uh, four times essentially, okay? After we have moved uh, right from the square that we calculated, uh, for which we already calculated the numbers, okay? So we go to the right and then uh, to reach our row, we're gonna have to go um, that many times to, to the bottom. So if our row is equal to four, then we're gonna have to go four times to the bottom, okay? So plus four here. And then the last part, uh, which I'm adding here is I minus J. And that is uh, because if you observe, um, after reaching this uh, cell here, uh, we're going to be increasing, uh, moving onwards to the left, okay? So how, how can we model this movement to the left? is with the difference between i and j. So i minus j, because i is greater than j, um, will give us the difference, uh, which we should add to the 13 we got here, in this case, uh, to get the number. So let's look at the scenario where j equals to two, okay? And uh, this is the number we care about, 15 essentially. So four minus two equals to two. If we add it to 13, that will give you 15, okay? And same goes for all of the other numbers of this uh, row, essentially. So these are the three uh, main components here. Let me just undo the changes. So again, the square here, the column here, and the i minus j, which is the difference that we should add here. So uh, you can visualize this looking at these three components here, okay? And you will extract the equation here that gives you the not equation, you will uh, extract this answer essentially, okay? Um, so let's look at the other case where i um, is odd, okay? So for i is odd, this is the answer. So let's look at the answer. Uh, again, it's a square, and then we add j. Uh, so let's look at this uh, case here where i is odd. So the square again, uh, so for number one, we have no square essentially, okay? There is no square here. Uh, for numbers five, six, and seven, this is a square, okay? And for number 17 up to 21, this is the square here, okay? And because i is odd, i minus one will always be even. And what we notice about these even-sided uh, squares is that the greatest number always end up uh, in the bottom left side, okay? So if we were to continue this pattern here, you will see that uh, the greatest number of uh, the six by six rectangle will be located in the bottom left corner as well, okay? And because of that, we know uh, for a fact that the numbers in our uh, row will always uh, uh, su uh, supersede the numbers uh, inside this square, okay? Because after we reach the bottom left side, we just go downwards uh, and into the row. So for 16, we go downwards up to 21, okay? We move right into our row uh, up to 21. So the first component here, let's take the case for uh, 
for row uh, five here, okay? So the first case is that we have the rectangle here, as we said, and then I'm adding uh, J here, as you have seen. So why do I add J? Because uh, now we're increasing uh, as J is increasing, okay? So 17, 18, 19, and so forth. So what I care about is these numbers here, essentially, and the other component is these numbers here, okay? Which is dictated by J, essentially. Uh, since we are increasing as J is increasing, okay? So you can visualize this as these two components here uh, for this uh, subcase here, okay? And after that, we just return from this case. So we're done for the case where I is greater or equal to J. And then what we are left with is the case where J is greater than I. So let's visualize uh, these two sub scenarios as well. So for J being even, let's uh, visualize this here. So for j being even, what I'm doing is I output j minus one times j minus one. And again, this is the rectangle, um, which is uh, of an odd side. So these, these are the rectangles that we care about. The one by one rectangle um, square, pardon me. The one by one square, the three by three square here, and the five by five square here, and so forth, okay? So what we have observed before for the uh, odd uh, sided uh, squares is that the the greatest number will always end up in the top right side, okay? And this number uh, is um, exactly before our uh, column, column which we care about, okay? So for the case of um, 10, 11, 12, um, what we care about here is this square, right? And the top right corner, which is nine, will always uh, will be before uh, the first number that we care about, which is ten. Okay, so essentially we need to count these numbers here, and what we are left with uh, counting is i essentially. Okay, so we can see that we go downwards, so one, two, three, and we just have to add this i to the number to to how many numbers we have here. So let's say for uh, twelve here, this is the component that we need to add. Okay. So uh, it's exactly the, uh, the row uh, where our number is located essentially, okay? Um, and yeah, here I'm just adding i essentially. And I'm returning, and then we go to the last case where j is odd, okay? So in that case, what I'm doing is, again, I get the square of j minus one. So in this case, because j is odd, j minus one will be even. And what we have observed for the even numbers again is that the, the, the even sided squares is that the greatest number will be on the bottom left side every time. So for the four by four square, 16 will be located in the bottom left side, okay? Now, uh, after counting these numbers here, so let's look at the specific case of uh, the, last, uh, the last column here. So from uh, 22 up until 25 essentially. Again, this is the rectangle that I care about, the four by four, okay? I know that the greatest number is on the bottom left side. So what I'm left with counting is these numbers here, okay? And then um, these numbers here, essentially, okay? So uh, by adding J, okay, I uh, cover this row as well, this entire uh, component of, of the row here, okay? So I have covered my square, as I said before, the j minus one times j minus one. With this j, I'm covering my uh, row component here, and then I need to go upwards. So how do we count this upwards uh, movement? Is the difference between j and i essentially? Okay. So if j is five, uh, which is this case here, this case here, and j is uh, and i is equal to two, for example, here. So five minus two equals to three we're gonna add uh, three to 21, okay? So with the square and the row component, we have reached 21. And now by adding uh, three, which is how many times we're gonna move upwards to reach our number, um, we get 24. 21 plus three equals to 24, okay? And this is where I'm adding J minus I. So it is the same logic. If you observe the cases where uh, J is greater with the cases where i is greater, you can you can observe that the equations are just uh, are pretty much the same. 
just this time we switch uh, i and j okay every time um, so that's pretty much the solution it's um, just uh, a, a mathematics uh, solution i would say you just observe how the pattern goes and you uh, split the problem into these too many cases and then into these two sub cases okay um, and if you if you draw uh, the solution that you will need uh, each time it will be easy for you to extract uh, to extract um, um, an expression here which will always give you how many numbers come before me and final and, and that will give me um, the number of my of the cell that I'm searching for essentially okay so if you got started this problem and this video helped you uh, please leave it a like subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one goodbye